So let's go through how all this stuff works. And I will show you. So let's first go to. So this is my shell here. This is just some virtual server, probably running in a container somewhere in the cloud, not a real one, but it allows me to do some stuff. So I want to show you the first thing you do when you're setting up your validator server, if you're using these scripts, is you clone the repo. So on the server, you can clone the repo. Pretend this is your server right now. Git clone the, the Git URL, which I copied from. You go code, copy this URL, and then enter. So what that did is it copied down all the files in this repo. So if I do ls, I can see there's a new folder called pull stream validator. I go into that folder, change directory. I look in that folder. I see there's a bunch of different scripts. And these are the different ones that help you do, do, do various stuff on your validator. So by default, they are read-only. So if I do la-ls, that'll tell me the, the uh, permissions of each one. So we see the scripts are read. Basically, everything in the repo is uh, read-only. So to make the scripts executable, I'm going to do change mode plus executable star, which means everything. Everything that ends in .sh, every script. And now, if I look at them again, I'll just look at one, for example, but we know they're all updated. We'll do the pulse chain validator script, the main script. We can see it's now executable. And now we can run it. So I'm not going to run it. Let's see. I'll just run it like this to show you the options. So let's jump over to let's jump over to to show you how this works. Yeah, I should probably put this check farther down. I'm always looking for all the code after the config, but uh, funny enough, I did it here, which is fine. So this checks for two arguments. It just requires your Ethereum address and the IP address of your server. So those are the only two things it needs in order to, to start the script. So that's why when you see this, it says requires Ethereum address, and this is your fee address. This is where you want the fees to go for validating. And this is your server's IP address, so the nodes can talk to each other. So if you didn't type that, that's why it says read the script notes to try again. Here you would just type like, you know, uh, a null address. Let's just use this for now, you know, dot, dot, dot. Uh, this is not going to work, obviously. And then your server IP address, whatever that is, one, two, three, four. That's what you would type in. I'm going to type it in here. I don't think it's going to work because, again, this is not a real server. This is just a test server. But let's just see, let's see how far it gets. So when you first type it, it'll say, okay, here's the validator setup. Again, this is a helper script. There's a couple of things that need to be done afterwards, but this does most of the setup for you. It takes around 30 minutes to complete, which just means you know, it's installing the packages. It's um, downloading the uh, uh, Rust and Go and all the dependencies and all that, building them. That just takes some time. And it could be 30 minutes, it could be an hour, it could be 20 minutes, depending on your bandwidth and your particular server specs. So if you, you can hit Control C to cancel or Enter to continue. We're going to roll the dice. Enter. Yeah, so this is actually, so this is the first thing it does. It's actually starting to install Rust, which is cool. So again, ignore any errors you see, ignore them, because this is not a real server. I'm surprised it's doing anything at all right now. But I just want to kind of show you uh, what it's doing. So on a real server, all this stuff would be fine. Um, if you're using Ubuntu 2204, you know, all the stuff that uh, I've been testing it on. So if we go back to the code, yeah, so this was just doing, that's why he says sudo. It's uh, doing the update, installing the packages, installing Go. And then now it's installing Rust. And once it gets done installing Rust, it'll try to install the node user, which again is good for isolation. It'll generate the client secret stuff. It will go get Aragon, fix all that stuff up for you. It'll create a, uh, the, sorry, I said Aragon. Oh, 
Good, good typo. It is geth. Sorry, I got to change that. It is not Aragon, it's geth. So that's just a comment typo right there. I'll have to change that. And it will uh, set up geth for you, which is their fork called GoPulse. It'll do a service count. And then it will start the services, start installing the lighthouse, do a whole bunch of like little magic stuff here to make sure everything works. And then it will start most everything. It'll open up some stuff on the firewall. That's something I'll add to the wiki too. Somebody opened an issue about recently, but uh, about network ports and stuff, I'll add that as well. And then it tells you exactly afterwards, after the script finished, finishes running, everything's successful. Afterwards, you need to generate your validator keys with the deposit tool on a secure different machine. We talked about this a lot before in a lot of other AMAs, but that's the only thing you need to do after running this script is generate your keys and then get your keys onto the server, not your seed words, only your keys. Your seed words you keep very private, your piece of paper, metal, whatever, protect it because that is, that is your money. That is how you withdraw later on. But your validator keys are what you're going to import into Lighthouse because it uses that to participate in the network. So you get those over to your server, you import them, and then you start the validator client. So in the meantime, your beacon chain on the Lighthouse, so there's two processes with the Lighthouse. There's the beacon chain and the validator uh, client. So at this point, you've, we've already started. So, so we didn't start, see it's commented out. We didn't start the validator client. We only enabled it and configured it. However, we started the beacon client because we want those to start syncing because you need to let them sync before you make your deposit. Otherwise, if you start, if you get activated on the network and you're not synced yet, then you're not participating. You're missing, uh, you're missing activity. You're missing uh, blocks and, and participation. So you're going to get, you could get penalized. So make sure you start syncing first. Same thing with Geth. We start it. We let them start working, start getting the juices flowing, you know. So again, wait till your clients are synced, then make your deposit at the launch pad. Again, if you follow these instructions, everything is very straightforward. I know there's a lot of technical details, but that's why people are writing scripts. Because instead of you typing every single command in individually, you can just dot slash run the script. And again, ignore the errors. This is a virtual just uh, demo demo thing. After everything's done, well, it's all good. Then it'll tell you what to do next, exactly what to do next. And if something goes wrong, it tells you how to uh, check and see what went wrong. So very cool stuff there. Again, these are the scripts. That is the uh, premier script. That is the Pulse Chain Validator setup. That's, how you, that's the first script you should start with in the repo. I would not run any other scripts in the repo until you start with this one, because this is the foundation for your uh, validator server. So with that, I'll talk about the other scripts as well. So we have, let me list them again, just so we can see them right here. We have the EC2 helper, which is just something that, I mean, it's not really, don't have to run on EC2 even, you can run on, on any server. You should probably rename it at some point, to just like server helper, I guess. But this will just set your host name. It can be anything you want. You just change it right there. Uh, it will uh, quieten down the message of the day stuff. I just don't prefer to see that when I SSH in and it will upgrade your box and get you ready to go. So I run this script. So if I'm launching stuff on AWS EC2, this is the first script I run. Yeah, I said Pulse Chain Validator said it's the first script you should run, but technically I would run this script first to get everything updated, reboot, uh, you know, let it run with a new kernel, whatever it did and set my uh, host name and all that just to get my box into a good state. And after that, the Pulse Chain Validator setup. This is the main script. This does all the heavy lifting, get your client set up, and get you to the next step you need to do. Now, before I go through the other scripts, what is the next step you need to do? Let's go through that. So the next step you need to do, and I'll open this too. I have like very detailed information on this. After running the script, again, this does about 85% estimated, gets all your stuff doing going, except the validator keys. Again, what, what we just talked about. On a different machine, you follow these instructions exactly, and then follow the instructions from the deposit tool, and you'll generate your keys. 
Then you copy them over to the validator one way or another. There's a bunch of different ways to do this. Um, one way is to uh, copy them over over the network. One way is to use a USB stick if you're, if you're running your own box beside you and it's not in the cloud. Another is this base 64 encoding trick, which I talk about here, all this stuff. So generate them on a different machine. And that could be a disposable virtual machine. If you're in the cloud, you can easily spin up a free tier instance uh, to do that on testnet. Maybe you want to be a little more, more secure on mainnet, whatever for, for testnet. You can uh, you know, just use something where you can trust it. Ideally, it's not connected to the internet or has very limited access, uh, just, just what you need to do. It could be a live CD, some kind of temporary file system. Uh, yeah, uh, ephemeral file system that you can trust uh, to generate these keys on, not your validator server. And you're going to have more detailed uh, instructions on this exactly, you know, typing all this stuff. This is for 3D, obviously updated to V4. And then uh, references as well. So again, if you, so next step is to generate your validator keys and then get them on your server. And once you get them on your server, again, you want to copy them over to your node folder. This again, all the instructions, exactly what you need to do. Minimal typing, manual man, min, minimal manual typing. Yes, that makes sense. I tried to automate every part of this process. You know, I didn't write a script for this because it's like, hey, just it's like four commands. You a lot of times, you know, you don't need to automate every single thing, but like try to automate as much as possible and then copy them over to the folder. Make sure the permissions are right. Open a shell as your node user. Use the Lighthouse client to import them to the directory where you put them it should be in the home folder. This is a shortcut for home. Type in your password, exit back to your regular user. And then you can start your client. Yeah, afterwards, then you start your client. Uh, it's just, just what we talked about. Let's see. Yeah, the last set of instructions, after you import them, then start your validator client with this command and wait till you're synced and then make a deposit. So after you are synced, I'll get to questions in just a minute. Uh, I know there's some questions there. I just want to finish uh, on, on explaining this stuff. So once your clients are synced, then you go over to the launch pad. You go over to this launch pad. And you make your deposit. You click deposit. Click continue. I've, I've read all this stuff 50 times, but you should read it. If it's your first time, especially read it, understand it. Understand what slashing is, penalties, understand key management. Uh, all the all the checklist stuff, really good documentation here that we forked from Ethereum. And then you choose your client. So in this case, it would be Go Pulse. This kind of tells you some minimal information about how to install it. And then we say we're going to use Lighthouse, which is built on Rust. Again, gives you a little bit of information uh, what to do. And then you type in number of validators. So it could be one, it could be five. Could be 10, could be 100, whatever it is. If it's one, let's say that is what your deposit needs to be. So then you would uh, say, oh, you were drawing. Nice. Okay. So I'm glad they added this. I'm glad they, uh, they updated it to do this. So now you can type in your withdrawal address. And if you didn't do that before, you do it afterwards, I'm sure. Uh, but now you type in your ad withdrawal address here. And then, yeah, you may choose to withdraw address, your initial deposit, automatically enable reward payments. So Anytime. Cool. So this is kind of automate stuff like that. And then your operating system, uh, Linux. And then this just tells you what you need to do now. So part of your validator keys, there are a few different JSON files within that. Um, actually, let me see. Well, we don't need to go. We'll have to go through here, but there's a few different JSON. There's your deposit JSON file, and then there's your validator keys. So what it's looking for now off of the off your server, off of your wherever you generated it, into the computer that you're going to be uploading it. So now you're on this computer. Upload the one that says deposit, your deposit one that has the public keys and information for your validator keys in order to tell 
So you're going to you're going to connect with a contract. You're going to make your deposit, and it's going to make a deposit for each of the validators that you have generated keys for. So that's what this has in it. It just has uh, information about your validators. So you upload that here, and after you upload it, hit continue, and then afterwards uh, it'll ask you to make a deposit for each one. You go through MetaMask, you spin gas, you make the deposit, and then after that, your validator will be in a pending state. Uh, once, and that means it's trying to get activated. It could take about 16, 24, 36 hours, something like that to get activated. Once it is activated, again, once you've made the deposits, it's all activated, then we can, um, then you're good. Yeah, so, so uh, you start with the validator client. At that point, it should say like awaiting activation. Once everything is synced, we make the deposit at the launch pad. And then once it's activated, uh, your validator is good to go. So once we have that, again, I'll get to questions in just a second. Okay, so once everything is activated, I'll, again, I'll get to questions just one second. I wanted to show you the rest of the scripts. So this is the reset, reset validator. So again, this makes it easy for me to reset things and, uh, and something goes wrong. I know people have been working with people uh, setting up their validator. If you just want to blow it all away and start over, then you can use the reset script. So all you do, if you want to use it just for your own protection, change this from false to true. It says, I know what I'm doing. If you don't do that, it will, uh, I'll show you. Let's see, reset. Reset validator. Oh. I've reset everything. All right. Sorry. Let me uh, think this. It just reset everything. So let me clone it again. Okay. N never mind. It didn't do that. So we do, let's do the reset script. So if you don't flip that to true, it will give you this message. So again, this is just your protection. I, I didn't want to create something that is, I mean, it's destructive in the way that it blows away all of your validator stuff. So I want to make sure you know what you're doing. You read the script, you see, hey, it stops the services. It removes the services and it deletes your node user. It deletes the home directory and deletes all the blockchain sync data. So make sure you, you're okay with that. You understand that. You know, are you okay resetting and deleting all the client data on the validator? So if you are, change that to true, you're good to go. And this will wipe everything away and you can run the script again. So do not run the setup script over and over and over. I do not recommend you do that because it could lead into some problems. It could, uh, you could just keep making things like adding more stuff to the system that doesn't need, it could get confused. You may see errors. It may work, but it's better if you're gonna run the script again to run the setup script. And then if you say, you know, it's not working for some reason, I wanna try again, then run the reset script and that'll reset everything. So that's the reset script. And then let's look at the monitoring script real quick. This will set up uh, Grafana and Prometheus for you. So, and then all you gotta do afterwards is import some dashboards. There's some pretty cool dashboards out there that I've seen. Actually should update this to include one of the new forked ones uh, from someone who uh, fixed one of the ones that was for ETH and now it's working for Pulse Chain. But essentially it will just update your clients to do metrics and it will uh, back up your services stuff. So this is a uh, reversible process. There's also a reset script for the validators or for the 
uh, monitoring stuff. And then there is, uh, you know, you generate the config for Prometheus. A lot of stuff is basically automated from these steps. So a lot of it's just like taken from this guide and automated in that fashion. And then after that, you follow, follow the instructions of how to access it. There's a secure way to do it. There's other ways of doing it. I talked about the secure way, which is using SSH to, to, to tunnel it over there. So only you can access it, not everyone on the internet. That's what I prefer. So that's the monitoring. Uh, reset, reset monitoring. So all this does is uninstall the uh, packages. So uninstalls Grafana or Prometheus. It removes uh, the artifacts they created and it restores your original uh, block, uh, Pulse Chain service files back there and restarts everything. So easy to reverse the stuff. Once you start getting a system, you want to try again. Try the reset scripts first before you just keep clicking, clicking. And then recently, uh, I was like, how do you update the clients? You know, I know this is probably a little tricky. So I added update client scripts. So uh, all it does is pull from the official repos. It will go into your, it'll stop the clients. It will update the git config to make sure all that stuff works. Uh, it'll fix some permission stuff here. It'll pull the updates and rebuild the clients. And then it will start the clients again. So there's no reset script for update clients. Um, That'll be a little bit more complex and I'm not sure why you want to do it in the first place unless there's some kind of error with the updates. And if that's the case, you know, we have bigger problems to solve. They'll probably, you know, e even issue another update to fix all that. So a uh, little bit of thought went into that too, but there's not the only script that doesn't have a reset is update clients. So make sure you want to update your clients, but there's a little bit tricky to do that for people. So, uh, you know, a lot of these I'm using myself as a validator. That's why I like writing these scripts too. I want to help everyone else understand how to do it, but I'm going to be using these scripts myself to, to quickly and efficiently, uh, you know, uh, do stuff with validators. The only other one I will go over is the RPC. So that's another one I committed recently. So you can use your own validator as a, an RPC in MetaMask. So, you know, use your own node, right? Run your own node, do your own transactions with your node, participate in the network. This only works for Firefox. Uh, cause again, I try to make it as secure as possible. And the only way I know how to release this and make it so there's no security holes in your, in your particular thing without spending a whole bunch of time to support a whole bunch of different browsers and stuff is limiting it to the, um, Firefox MetaMask plugin. That's what this does. So if you have MetaMask and Firefox and you're running a validator, then these are instructions and there's more instructions on the readme of how to set it up and uh, different nuance around uh, RPC as well. So that's pretty cool. Uh, and I went through that recently. So those are the scripts. I uh, hope you understand uh, you know, how to use them. The, so again, you would use, if you're wanting to set up, do, do, like take advantage of some of the features that this script does. Uh, you know, I run this before on like a clean operating system before I do the validator, before I run the uh, setup for the clients. I run this on the validator first, and then I run Pulse Chain Validator Setup, which does all the setup for you. You just give it these two arguments or parameters, and it, and it does setup for you. If you want to reset it, you can use Reset Validator. Then I would install monitoring. Again, don't install monitoring before the Pulse Chain Setup because it relies on your clients already being set up because it actually modifies. You know, it backs up your previous client setup. It modifies different flags. It adds these in there. So you need to run the setup script first before you add monitoring in that order. And then if you want to reset monitoring, you use the script to blow everything away. And then after that, if you want to set up RPC, you can. If you want to update your clients, you can run that anytime after you set up your uh, run the validator setup script. You don't have to have monitoring installed to update the clients, of course. And yeah, that's... Uh, that's pretty much all, the whole process. So at that point, you know, this is a screenshot of uh, V3 when everything was working on that and, you know, how much memory is using all that stuff at that point. Uh, you know, when mainnet goes live as well, I'll, I'll be updating the scripts, making sure everything works on mainnet, of course. Uh, but until then, yeah, at that point, you should have a working validator. It should go into, again, 
uh, maybe within 24 hours, 36 hours or so, it should give you an activated state and uh, you're off to the races. Validators go burr, burr, burr.